What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel and in this week's video we'll take a look at building this coffee table I've got here. So this is a pretty simple design coffee table but I wanted to do something a little bit differently this time so I built this using the Domino. Now in last week's video you saw me unbox and go over a little demo with the Domino but in this week's video we'll turn it into a practical build and actually build something with it. Now if you don't have a Domino no worries you can build this table with other methods and I'll touch a little bit on that in the video. So with all that said let's get right into it and check out how I built this table. So starting things off, the first thing that I needed to do was to mill up all the lumber that I was using for this build. I'm using pine 2x6 board for this project, so the first step of milling it is to joint the face, giving me a flat surface to work with. After I have that face flat, then I put that face against the back of the joiner, and I'll joint one side of the board. After I have one face and one edge flat, it's over to the table saw, where I'll rip the other edge off of this board. And then finally, we'll go over to the planer and plane down that last surface, which gives us a perfectly square board as well as getting rid of any of the rough surfaces on these boards. So you might notice that the board here I'm having is a little bit shorter. That's because the lumber I'm using on this project I had originally planned on using on a different project that didn't work out. It was one of those projects where just everything that could possibly go wrong does go wrong so I decided to reuse all the boards I already had cut and milled up for this table instead. So here I'm cutting some legs to link. Now these are also 2x6s. Now the only thing different about these, you can notice these are a little thicker. These are just two 2x6s glued together, cut to a link. And then the top part where it's a little thinner is some type of half lap type joint that I tried to use, but it didn't work out. So I just cut those off to get rid of them. So here are the boards that'll be used for the top of this. Again, it's just milled up 2x6s and I'm just laying them out right now. I'm not actually gluing them together. I just wanna get everything spaced out for the measurements I'll need for these aprons. So rather than measuring where the legs were supposed to go in the corner, I just used this scrap piece of three quarter inch board. So I placed the scrap board flush with each end of the table top and then I moved the leg into position to where it was up against that scrap board. That allowed me to keep everything consistent with my measurements. So this is done on both the short and the long apron here, so you couldn't really see it in the other shot. But in that shot with the long apron, you can see that all I'm really doing is measuring the distance on the gap between the legs, and that'll be the length of the apron. So I'm cross-cutting another 2x6 to the length of the aprons on both the short and the long aprons, and I'll need four pieces of each of these. So those are the short aprons that you see there, and then this board here is for the longer apron. So these will be measured out, and then they'll go in place of those gaps that I measured the distance on just a minute ago. With all this talk about dimensions, just so you know, if you are interested in making this table for yourself and you want the dimensions, you can check out the description where I've included the dimensions of every piece and every cut that I made for this table. So when I made the legs previously, I had ran a roundover bit on the router on each edge of that to give it a rounded over and softer look. So because these apron pieces will be used to join the legs together, I didn't want there to be a gap where that would stick out and not match that rounded over profile. So I remeasured the width of the legs where that curve ended, and then I ripped all of the apron pieces to that link so that they would be flush with the inside of that curve. And so what is done on one side of the apron obviously must be done on the other side due to that round over curve so I did the exact same thing with the long aprons. Now if you were building this from scratch you obviously could just completely skip this part and worry about the round over on each piece after it was over. Just because the legs that I'm using from that previous build that didn't happen already had that rounded over profile, this was an extra step that I had to take to make sure everything lined up and the profile of those whenever they lined up looked good. So here's the part of the video that turns into building this thing with the domino. We haven't used the domino yet on this build and this build is building this table with the domino. So this is where the domino comes into play. Now if you don't have a domino and you wanna build this table, you can you just use pocket holes or some type of other joinery in place of the domino. I'm new to the domino. It's a new tool that I just got recently. So the reason that I'm using it on this table is to kind of figure out how everything works, what I can and what I can't do and how the joints come together whenever I'm using the dominoes. So this build is a learning experience for me and I wanted to do something that I was familiar with the frame and how this table went together. I've done coffee tables before so that's why I'm using the domino on this build. 
Now if you're wondering what the heck a domino is and you've never seen it before, it's a machine that very precisely cuts out mortises and then these tenons are sold separately which fit perfectly into the mortise and allows you to line things up very very precisely and pretty well perfectly every time. So here's what the first board looks like after those tenons are placed in the mortises. So I'll need to cut mortises out on the leg that'll line up with where those tenons are on the apron piece and then they'll fit together perfectly. So the domino has a ton of different gauges and little micro adjustments that allow it to line up perfectly and it really does take any guesswork out of the equation whenever you're trying to do mortise and tenon joinery. So there's a little bit of a learning curve as far as getting used to how the domino works and how the measurements line up on each side but once you have everything figured out and you know how the tenons line up with where those mortises are cut this is a super easy super efficient and very strong way to join a couple boards together. So to explain in a little more detail here, I marked the center of each of those tenons with a line and then there's a gauge on the front of the domino that allows you to line that up. Here's a great shot of my arm in the way to where you can't see anything that I just explained but I think you should get the idea. Here's a second shot of me making that cut where my arm is once again in the way so after this video I definitely will have to have a word with my cameraman about some of the angles that are taken during this video. But the process of how the domino works really is super simple and you can see that after I have those mortises cut out, those tenons just pop right into place. So here I'm just dry fitting everything together to make sure that my measurements were correct and that everything will line up properly. So this will be taken apart later and reassembled after everything is glued up. Here's a closer look at the first frame and then obviously we need two of these because this is a coffee table. So I built the second frame with the same exact dimensions as the first frame and then in order to attach those together we want to get those longer apron pieces back out and we will be connecting them with dominoes like we did with the other pieces of the shorter aprons. So I mistakenly cut the tenon going the wrong direction here. It's going from side to side rather than up and down. And here's a comparison of the tenons that I'm using. So these tenons come in different sizes and different lengths. Because these aprons are for the long aprons and they span a much longer distance than the short aprons, I'm using bigger tenons here for a little bit stronger of a joint. So I flip the frame pieces over and then make the cut on the opposite sides. This will be the bottom part of the coffee table. I mentioned that I cut the mortises from side to side rather than up and down. That's true, but it really doesn't make any difference. The tenons are plenty strong either way, and that section of the coffee table won't really be holding a whole lot of weight, so it's not anything to be concerned about. It just should be the other way. So the apron pieces will need a mortise to accept that tenon from the side frame. Here's a better look at the mortises after they are cut. So I put a mortise on each end of these and then it was time to go ahead and dry fit everything up as far as the ends to make sure that everything lined up the way it should. Whenever you're building something with mortise and tenon joinery, whether it's with the domino or with conventional mortise and tenon where you actually cut those out by hand or machine, you'll always want to take the time and dry fit everything together to make sure that it does line up properly. If you assume that everything will fit and you go ahead and put glue on those and get some of the joints glued and clamped together, then to find out that one side is too long or it doesn't fit, taking that apart is going to be a major pain and you're going to have glue everywhere all over the place if you can even get the thing apart. So just trust me when I say that it's necessary to dry fit everything together and I am speaking from experience. It's not fun when it doesn't fit when you already have glue on some of the joints. So at this point we have the main part of the frame assembled for the table or at least dry fit together. So I grabbed another board here and I'm cross cutting this to link for the slats. So the slats will also be made from a 2x6. And we go through the same basic milling process here with each board. Now I cross cut it to length first just because it's easier to handle boards in smaller sections than an 8 foot board. There are limits on the joiner and the planer as to how short of a board you can run through the knives. So just be sure to double check that if you're working with smaller boards. When I had the slats all nice and clean it was time to move over to the table saw and rip them to width. You notice here that I'm using the gripper push block. I don't really like to push a whole lot of unnecessary products in my videos or on my channel, but this tool is awesome. It's much more secure than a push stick. It keeps your hand and your fingers away from the blade. So if you're in the market for one of these or any of the other tools that you see in this video, be sure to check out the links in the description where I have a direct link to each product that I'm using. 
So because this video is a domino based coffee table build, I decided to put the slats in using dominoes. So the first thing in order to do that was to take everything apart. And then I wanted to divide the bottom apron into four sections. So I first found the center of these, made a line, and then I found the center of each section of those and divided them into four equal sections altogether. Now when I cut the slats out, I ended up with 12 slats. So I'll put three slats in each of these four sections in order to space everything out equally. You may have noticed that I put another board on each side. That's actually the top apron piece that won't be used there, but it's just to keep everything square and lined up. So when I had everything divided into their equal sections, I did the best I could as to just spacing them out by looking at them, looking for equal spacing. I then numbered them to keep them all in order. And then finally, I used my square to make a line from the centerpiece to that apron, which would be the line that I used to line up the domino on when I make this cut later. So looking back on this, I really wish I would have used either some type of setup block or a measurement block or done some type of measurement in order to space these out equally. I did the best I could by just looking at them and it turned out pretty well but it wasn't perfect so if I was redoing this I would stop, take the extra time, and measure everything out to make sure that my spacing between each of those slats is absolutely perfect. So just like we had done previously on all of the other joints that would be lined up with the line, I used the domino to cut a mortise on each of those which would allow me to later line them up. Here is a better look at what I mean by lining up the line with the gauge on the top of the domino. And I don't think I've actually explained in this video how the domino works. So it has a bit that plunges forward that both rotates and oscillates from side to side at the same time, which works to cut that mortise out. So after that mortise is cut out like we've seen earlier, you can pop a tenon in there and it lines everything up very nicely. Here's just one more sped up quick action shot of the dominoes. So the key to making this thing efficient is to have everything lined up at once and ready to go. You can see here that I put all the pieces for those slats in one place so I could just move right down the line and cut them all at once. Once I had all the slats cut to length, I headed over to the router table. So I have, I think, a quarter inch roundover bit on here, and I'm touching all the edges with the roundover bit to give them a softer profile. So earlier in the video, we took an up close look at the legs, and you could see how they have that soft rounded over edge. So I did the same thing earlier with the legs, so that's where this came from. It's kind of funny that a normal board has the rounded over edge to begin with, and then we mill it up to where it has a sharp square edge, only to once again round everything over and give it that soft look. Definitely seems like a lot of extra unnecessary work, but taking the extra time to mill everything and then give it that soft round over will really make everything look so much better than if you were just using it rough to begin with. So I used the round over bit on all pieces, including the lower aprons, the top aprons, the slats, and the side pieces of the table. And after that was done, it was time to put the slats in place. So as I mentioned earlier, this is primarily a domino based table build. So I use dominoes to connect the slats between the aprons. So it might seem like a lot of extra work and a lot of dominoes, but they fit together so well and it's so easy to put them on. At least until you're on the last one and then you accidentally bump it and it all comes crashing down. So if you're building this table for yourself, I would recommend skipping the part where you knock everything over. It's just easier and it goes better together if you don't knock it over or drop it on the floor. Anyways, I picked it back up. Honestly, the dominoes are super strong, so it wasn't any big deal whatsoever that it fell down. Nothing broke, nothing came apart. It's one more reason why I like the dominoes and why I'll continue to use them doing this type of build. So I tried to align everything with the slats vertical like you can see here and took me all of about 10 seconds before I realized that that wasn't going to be possible. Just because there's so many different mortises and tenons that have to be lined up, I decided it'd be much easier if I put everything down on the side. So with it laying down, I was able to start on one end, pop a couple into place, and then clamp across them, which would kind of line everything up. And I one by one just tapped them in place to where I finally had everything lined up, and then I could clamp it together like you can see here. So when you get to the point of where you're putting the clamps on to let everything set and the glue dry, make sure that you wipe all of the extra glue off or unless you're going to take that off with a chisel later. But that extra glue will show through, especially if you use stain. So you want to clean it up before you get everything glued to set and dry. 
So while the slat frame portion of this was drying, I decided to go ahead and assemble the side of the frames. Now, because you've already seen me do this with the dry fit, I'm not gonna talk a whole lot about what I'm doing here. So instead of that, I'll just give you a couple quick thoughts of mine on the Domino. So the Domino is a really neat tool. I'm glad I have it, I'll use it frequently, but I don't think it's practical in this scenario, at least on a coffee table build that is simple like this. This coffee table here isn't super complex, so I could do the same thing with pocket holes, which I would probably recommend for this build rather than dominoes. Now that said, the dominoes are super sturdy and everything does line up pretty well perfectly. So they definitely have their place and time for more complex joinery. But as far as this build, I'm not sure that I would actually recommend using the dominoes. Like I said earlier in this video, this is more of a learning experience for me on how to use the machine. And if you factor in the cost of each individual domino, I'm not sure that this is exactly cost effective on a table like this that might not be considered as valuable as something like a mid-century table maybe made out of walnut or oak or something a little bit fancier than this. Now all that said I'm not in any way bashing the domino or taking anything away from it. It is an awesome tool. It has tons of micro adjustments and there's a lot that I'll be able to do with this that I couldn't do before that. Mainly the point that I'm trying to make is that if you're a new woodworker or maybe you've seen this tool for the first time it's really not necessary to run out and buy one of these immediately just to make the table like I'm doing. I have several other videos making similar coffee tables like this using pocket holes so that's an easier method and it can definitely be done without the domino. So that's enough talking about the domino and we'll get back to the video. So what you see me doing here is using dominoes for tabletop alignment. You can also do this with dowels, which I've done in the past, or if you have a biscuit joiner, it does the exact same thing. The dominoes will add a little bit of strength, but really the strength comes from the glue joint, so you don't necessarily need dominoes. I don't typically do this on my tables. I just glue the seams with a good edge. The most important thing is getting a good flat edge between the boards. If you have a joiner, that'll really help everything out. But I wanted to try out the domino here and see if the alignment was so good that it would make me want to do this in the future. So I will admit that using dominoes for alignment made these boards line up pretty well perfectly and I didn't have to hand plane anything down. Obviously I would still have to sand, but the tabletop boards really did line up perfectly and I was pretty happy with how good the alignment was on those. I don't know that I'll necessarily be using those in the future, mainly because it takes a little bit of time and I feel like I can get a pretty good tabletop without them. Plus I actually like using the hand plane for whatever reason, so I might just skip this step in the future. So while the tabletop was drying, everything else was ready to be assembled. There's a look at some of the longer tenons that I'm using for this. Now if you haven't checked out my other video going over the domino itself in some details, the tenons come in all different lengths and sizes. So because these are longer aprons and they'll be supporting a little bit more weight than the side frames, I'm using the longer tenons here. So with one side attached and glued up, all we had left to do was to put the other side on. So I put this down on the floor. Obviously it would be easier for me to reach and get to that way. And then with a couple taps of the hammer, everything lined up perfectly, ready to be clamped up and left alone for the glue to dry. Normally I'll let everything set overnight for the glue to dry up. I think the label recommends at least four hours, but I usually like to let everything set for a little while longer than that, just to be sure that all that glue is dry when it's time to take those clamps off. So once that glue is dry and we take the clamps off, the frame of this table will be finished. So we needed to do just a little bit of work on the top. I grabbed my sander and I sanded everything down to 220. Now, like I mentioned earlier, the dominoes really did allow this to line up pretty well perfectly, but even with that, you still want to sand out those glue seams to get everything completely flat and perfectly smooth. After I was done with the sanding, I grabbed my track saw and flush cut each side. This allows me to not worry about having to glue up the boards to the exact same length. You just get them close and then you can trim each side to a perfectly flat line. You really can't beat this process with a track saw. It saves you a lot of headache and a lot of hassle when trying to glue those boards up to the same length. After we had the tabletop cut to the same length on each end, I grabbed the router with the same roundover bit I used earlier, and I detailed all the sides with the roundover bit. This will really make the tabletop pop, and it gives it a much better look when it's finished. 
Whenever you trim the perimeter with the router, sometimes you can leave a small mark or some scuffs where the router went over the top. So I usually touch it up and re-sand the top just a little bit to get those marks out. Also, don't forget to get the underside in those corners. It helps to take some of those sharp edges and corners off before you get to the finish. In order to attach the table top to the base frame, I'll be using Z-clips. So in order to use Z-clips, you first need to cut out a slot in the apron for the Z-clip to set in. So I'm using the slot cutting bit on my router and you just gently plunge that into each piece of the apron. If you use this bit, make sure you let it stop before you take it out, otherwise you risk kickback. But then you're left with a nice slot that the Z-clip can pop down in. Pretty simple, very easy to do, and I really like this method. And the whole idea behind using Z-clips opposed to screws or glue or nail is to allow for wood movement as that top expands and contracts. The Z-clips will move a little bit inside of those slots in the apron. That way the tabletop won't crack or be under tension whenever it does expand due to those seasonal humidity and temperature changes. After you have the tabletop centered on each apron, all you have left to do is to put screws through the Z-clips into the tabletop. At this point, it's really important to make sure that your screws aren't too long and come out the tabletop because that would be really bad at this point since the table is almost finished. After the screws are in that would wrap everything up so here's a couple final shots of how the table looked. This was a fun build. It was a little bit different using the dominoes like I mentioned earlier. Not necessarily sure that I would use the dominoes again for this but this was a good learning experience and I learned a lot about how the tool functioned. So thank you for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you did leave a comment below. Don't forget to like share and subscribe and as always stay tuned for more.